Nasty Will, will be a thrill. Grandpa and chill, grandson and friends. Grandpa and chill in full effect. We talk about it all, yeah, put it all on the set. With that pet craze too, we chillin' with Rosie. Come through, stay tuned, yeah, listen closely. Cause this the millennials in the silent generation. Coming together, discussion in rotation. This is Grandpa and Chill. three but oh well hey everybody this is another episode of grandpa and chill we're on with dante ruscioleli <laughs> uh so glad to have you on today i'm here uh as always with my amazing uh co-host finus uh my grandfather and our amazing producer sierra how you doing today dante i'm great hi everybody finus barton sierra yeah. Um, I'm having a very nice day, you guys. I'm really happy to be on here. Where is everybody? Yes. What part of the country? Illinois. All of Philadelphia. you? Philadelphia. No. New York. Yeah. New oh, York. Wow. Philly. Everybody's in Illinois. a different spot. Where in uh, Illinois are you? Chicago area. Oh, cool. That's where all my family is. Yeah. Of course they are. Mama mia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's where you're born? In, uh, no, in I was born in a really small town called China Lake here in, in um, California. Oh. It's uh, part of this town called Ridgecrest, and it's the earthquake capital of the world. So if you look up earthquake capital of the world, it'll pop up. We have about 1,400 earthquakes a day, and there's nothing to do there. And that's where I was born, on a very secretive military base, and saw a lot of crazy stuff growing up that is now you know, just drones and things that, you know, back in the 70s, no one had ever seen. And I got to see it early and thought it was spaceships at first. But my dad's like, don't worry, you're fine. These are not spaceships. How'd your parents end up there? Um, My dad was actually in the Air Force at a base right next to it. Um, he was there when Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. So he was sort of in the um, military and went to France and things and came back to Edwards Air Force Base. And this base is about an hour from there. And he had heard that they were hiring civilians and he needed a civilian job. And he got one and they ended up, he ended up driving bombs forever. And then they moved him up, I guess, because of his nice personality or something. Because I guess in the military, he was a radio guy just like you guys, and you all have good personalities. So they moved him up to be the person who meets with all of the astronauts, presidents, uh, secretaries of the Navy, anyone visiting. It was his job to play golf, show them around the base, bring oh. them to our house for a party, things like that. It was a crazy childhood I had. Wow, that sounds really fun and entertaining. Or I don't I don't know, I'm sure it's like double, I'm sure it's the grass is greener. Was it awful? Did they have- No, I loved it. I lived in this small town where it was super safe and- <laughs> You know, I'm not going to say that it was perfect because nothing's perfect when you actually, you know, are there. But when you look back on it, it was a pretty good childhood, you know, kind of childhood where the street lights aren't on. I get to stay out. And, you know, we rode our bikes everywhere and I lived in the desert. It's like, how did my parents? I wouldn't even let my daughter walk into the desert for like five minutes. <laughs> and we got to like go out and like, you know, we're di I was looking for I was I I'd see something run into a hole. I stick my hand in the hole. How did I know it wasn't a snake? Or because there's so many earthquakes, you could lost the arm easily. <laughs> you don't the... feel them, honestly. You'll feel like <laughs> one a week, just sort of barely. But the rest are so minor, you don't even notice. Uh, I've never yeah. been in an earthquake before. That's a crazy experience. Um, I was. It's not that earthquake? scary, honestly. The, the big one that we had in L.A. was very scary. That was scary to me because I had no idea what was happening. And the reason it was scary wasn't that I hadn't been in an earthquake and I hadn't shook. It was that I lived in an apartment building and all of a sudden I'm on the phone with my ex-wife. It's like two in the morning and we're talking and all of a sudden the whole world is shaking, not just the building, but I'm, I'm it, I was outside on the balcony a minute ago. I came back to bed. I'm talking to her and it's raining out as hard as it can. There's just water hitting my everything and coming in. And I was like, oh my God, the world's ending. Everything's yeah. shaking. There's water pouring. I realized what had happened was the pool on top of the building broke in the earthquake <laughs> and it's pouring onto my, yeah, it's pouring like into oh, my house no. and everything else and all this stuff. But I really did think the world was ending. But oh, my no. first thought was not to run out. I had a little puppy that uh, I just bought and he ran under the bed and I'm like, well, I'm going, I'm going to go with this little guy. So I, I waited, I found him, I pulled him out and we made it outside and 
just stood out there. It was the most bizarre day. I mean, at least at that point in my life, because you walk out and that one was the big one. That was the one where everybody thought they were going to die. And some people did. And, uh, you know, you, I, I lived in Hollywood proper at the time, right off the boulevard. And I went out there and like, you know, murals of like Frank Sinatra had come down and you look behind the wall and I would see like an old Pepsi can from like the 1950s that someone had put in the wall as they were plastering it. And, you know, the weirdest thing I think I saw was there was one place on Hollywood Boulevard and it had escalators that came down on two sides and they were intertwined because of the earthquake all the way down. Like they had somehow made a DNA chain wow. um, from the earthquake. I, mm. I, I know I was describing that with my hands because I'm Italian, but I tried to also verbally make it equivalent for the rest of the people. I, I felt it too. Yeah. Um, I, and now LA is going through natural disaster like daily, right? The, the wildfires. Well, I don't know what I recorded today, but I think it was just a fire under um, a freeway or something. But, you know, I think what happens is when you're getting news about other places, you it's never what people make it out to be. Mm. Like, I'm sure people think that everywhere you go in L.A., there's homeless people and smash and grabs and, you know, violence. And someone said the other day that like uh, someone said in the audience of one of my shows, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm a Windows guy. And the guy's like, you got to get them to go to L.A. and put all the windows back. They got smashed out. I'm like, oh, my God. First of all, that was like five days of looting and rioting five years ago. And most of the people that I saw doing it, I could tell were not from L.A. They weren't. Mm -hmm. L.A. people were terrified. We were in our homes. People with Arizona, Nevada license plates, other parts of California. I'm serious. They would say like Palmdale on their, on their plates. They would jump out at a place that was already being looted, fill up their stuff, and you would see them drive away. And I didn't see one neighbor doing it. I didn't see, you know, I also marched in every Black Lives Matter protest for two years. Um, and people go, oh, weren't those terrible? And people are starting problems and right. Not once. Not once. We never did anything wrong. As a matter of fact, the one time that they started beating us. Well, there's lots of times. But the one time they started beating us that really affected me was someone used a megaphone in front of Mayor's house. Uh, Mayor Eric Garcetti, his dad was the district attorney, I think, when uh, we had like the last riots here, right? Like wrong guy for this town for the second time. So um, what happened here was it's he, um, some people protested with a megaphone in front of his home. And there's a law in the book saying you cannot protest with a megaphone in front of any public uh, government official's home, right? You just can't. You can protest, no megaphone. Someone used a megaphone um, and they came out and started hitting everyone and a little girl on film was hit. She was like three in her dad's hands and got hit with a oh baton. God. So I looked up every law I could and I went to the mayor's house the next day with a megaphone and it was, thank God it was December, for the next 10 days, I sang as many loud Christmas carols as I could in front of this asshole's home. I can't tell you how many police had to show up for me and they'd be like, you can't do this. I'm like, please look up every law. If, if you find one that says I have to leave, I will. Otherwise, call your boss and he'll tell you just to go away. Um, but it was a weird time in L.A. and the news was not reporting it correctly. And that's what bothered me. You know, it's like the police were always starting stuff with protesters. And when people bring up BLM, they always bring up, oh, there's this corrupt group called BLM that controlled everything. Do you know I only saw them twice and I went to 50 marches? BLM was a movement, not a company. It, I don't even know who those people were and I didn't like their marches. They had the smallest marches. If you actually look up BLM, you'd think that they would have millions of followers. BLM LA does not because no one followed them. We weren't about BLM LA. We were about Black Lives Matter, the movement. And that's kind of all it was. Sorry, I talk a lot. I, I don't mean to go up so many nah, I mean, it, it is good for podcasting. Yeah, it's yeah. Great for podcasting. You're doing great. Well, I guess the news media, the news media is about the extremes. That's how they, they uh, generate revenue by, you know, interesting getting interest in what they're Can reporting. I tell you something horrible that I, I posted and it's going viral? So I put this out, I think yesterday, and it has like 30,000 hits within a day, which isn't bad for me just talking. All I said into the camera was, I said, um, 
I have had to file 16 police brutality reports against officers here in Los Angeles. Every single one of them came with full videos where I never edit it and you see the entire thing. You watch them, you know, falsify a ticket saying someone was parked there. <laughs> me, they did this to me. They said it was parked two blocks away, but put a ticket on my car in a private lot. Luckily, I caught them doing it. And they still deny it. They go, oh, well, you were parked there early in the day. And I said, so? You can't give a retro ticket, my friend. You have to give it when I'm parked there. And I said, besides that, I never was. I, I never was. But here's the point. I said in this video, I said, I filed 16 reports against police officers. And I told this to, uh, I, this week, I, I was going to run for mayor of Los Angeles. And my wife said, our, our company is doing too good. You're not doing it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I already had all the Democrats after me. And you know, people already follow me. And Obama follows me, all these people. And so everyone wants to know who I'm voting for. So this week, I've been meeting with mayoral candidates and, and city council and people who are running for everything. And one of the city council people, his name I don't want to mention because I don't want to hurt his campaign if, you know, people would be mad at him for this. But here's what he said. He goes, Dante, if you look it up, your 16 reports are just 16 of 5,000 that they get every year. And the police investigate themselves. How many of those reports do you think they have ever said the police did one thing wrong? And I said, zero. And he goes, right. He goes, mathematically, it's impossible. It's impossible mathematically for 5,000 reports with videos to be sent into the police. And each time they send you a letter back a year later, so that they break your heart, they take a year. And then, they, and then they send it back saying, we deny everything that you said. And then there's really nothing you can do unless you find a lawyer who's willing to take your case. But if you're a white guy who is getting this to happen to him, it may be for the right reasons for BLM and stuff, but because I am not a black person that this is happening to, black lawyers don't want to talk to me and they're the ones I need, you know, and it's really hard. Um, but bad things happen. So so here's how this all got started for me. So it's about the, the last day of all of this rioting and looting. Um, I'm a celebrity manager and one of my clients was coming over that day to film some stuff in my home. And... Um, I heard a helicopter. And so I was like, wow, that's like above my house. I go outside and there's like 20 cop cars. I'm not kidding. 20 cop cars, a helicopter. And I look and there's this nice SUV and a young black kid who's about 18 years old on his knees. And then grandpa gets out of the car and he looks like he's 90. It turns out he was about 78, but he looked terrible because he just got over cancer, I found out. But anyway, he can barely walk and they're like, get on your knees. He's like, I can't, I can't. And he can't, he cannot get, it took him forever. And when he did, he was shaking. And I started screaming at the police. What did they do? Is it just because they're black? And this is the end of the riots? So you pulled them over for being black? And they won't answer. Now my, my, because I'm screaming this to the police, now my neighbors start coming out. I'm screaming it for 45 minutes. And then I catch something on video that was so important. Finally, the guys, I don't know if it's the captain, I don't know who shows up. The boss shows up. It's a black guy. And the white guy who had pulled them over says to him, I don't know why we pulled them over. He goes, the helicopter 45 minutes ago said them. And he goes, we've been sitting here wondering what to do ever since. And when I heard it and I had it on video, I repeated it loudly to all my neighbors. And then we all started screaming, let them go. This went on for 45 minutes and then they did let them go because they had no reason to pull them over. But my video went immediately viral, immediately. Um, Rihanna followed me that day and wrote me private messages and a thousand other celebrities, but that started my journey. I realized that day how corrupt our system was and it bothered me because as a father of a black daughter, I want the system that she lives in to be better for her. And it isn't right now. We have the most corrupt police system I've ever heard of in my life. Our sheriff's department here in Los Angeles is so corrupt, we're having to make laws to stop them from harassing the families of people they've murdered. So if they murder someone just so that the family won't sue them, come after them or whatever, they go after anyone in that family who might have tickets unpaid. How can we put them in jail? How can we throw them on the ground and beat them? How can we follow them home every night and pull them over? How, you know what I mean? All these things that they do, writing them letters and all these cops will jump on their social media and threaten them and say things. And it's disgusting what happens here in L.A. And the mayor is just as bad. But the problem here, I voted my whole life Republican and Democrat. So I'm not out here to 
get on anyone for anything like that. It's a human issue. It really is. Um, this is a human issue. But the problem in L.A. is we have really shitty Republicans that live here, but no one can run as a Republican in L.A. You have to put a D next to your name. So we end up with some of the worst human beings on the planet because the D was next to their name. And we didn't realize that they were in bed with the cops, don't care about beating little black girls with megaphones. You know what I mean? Like, it's the worst I've ever seen it. And I've been here since the first riots. And I knew Rodney King. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, my town is, is shit right now. I said that to my wife. I said, I hate it here. I really do. That's why I was trying to run for mayor and get the right people in because we're so corrupt that it's unlivable. Really, I have so many videos of these police doing things to me. Do you know what happened? So during, I would say about a year ago, it was a year ago, it was March 21. I'm driving down Sunset and I see a big march of white people. Well, a week before, it was Breonna Taylor's birthday memorial or something, March. And a small group of people. But guess what? Police and riot gear showed up and started hitting them for no reason. Just like started, it all went down on Vine Street. I have it on video for no reason. But this was every time black people got together. So I started, I'll show you. I just found this in my garage. I started civil rights, um, security. I became security. I would march at the front and be ready to protect everyone. And I did that. But what happened as I'm driving by, I see all these white people unchecked. There's not a cop around. I've never seen that with a group of people like this. I see some bike cops blocks away. So I get over, I pull over and I'm like, I'll film it just because I want to make a video go viral about they don't do it to white people. As I'm doing it, I realize these are Proud Boys. Three of them are wearing those kind of masks you rob a bank in. Like, a, I don't know, I have one in here somewhere. But, you know, just a mask that you put on. Scary mask, like a clown or something. And they say, as I'm filming them, let's go see if we can break in through the back. They're at CNN. So I call the cops. As I'm standing there filming them, Someone sees that my hat says civil rights activist, <laughs> so they take it and punch me and someone hits me from behind. And now I'm like, you know, doing this, like stop it and blah, blah, blah. I call the cops. Nothing happens. Keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. Finally, those six bike cops slowly come up and they see me getting hit by these guys. And I run up to them and I go, you just saw it. I have it on video. And I look and this guy, this asshole, his name is Sergeant Gutia but he likes to be called Gutilla because he thinks he's very white. Um, but Gutia, I met him two days earlier and all I said to him on video was, hey, those officers are interacting with someone. Could you ask them to put on masks? And he hated me for it, just hated me for it. At one point he's like, you can't talk through a mask. And I was like, dude, I don't know uh, 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 a big business. He's like, stop right there. You don't call me dude. It's either Sergeant Gutilla or it's blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, or, or captain or sergeant or whatever, you know, whatever he yelled at me. It's like, okay, buddy. So I look over when these guys are punching me and I run over to these cops and it's him. And they're just sitting there watching. And I go, aren't you going to do anything? And I'm saying this on video. They all look at me and put their heads down. And here's how you know that they hate me. They said, Dante, we didn't see a thing. And they put their heads down. And that gave the Proud Boys permission to start beating me, which they did. They broke my nose. They hit me with a flagpole. I had to scream and get out of there. Like when I got home, I had blood all over my face. My shirt was ripped and the cops watched them do it the entire time. That's how corrupt it is here. Because I'm a civil rights activist and stand up for right, these guys were like, hey, we don't care if they kill you because you asked us to put on masks yesterday and you called him dude. Like, give me a break. Sorry, oh, guys. I get very passionate about activism. I apologize. It's all right. I'm here for Calm it. down, everyone. I, why? Why so? I feel like you, I feel like you make a really good point about um, just how I guess how just the corruption is has changed or evolved because you know it used to it used to really have a lot more it used to be a lot more valuable to essentially have like a white escort to do things and go about places that you should be allowed to go to or things you should be allowed to do, but you literally just can't because of racism. And I remember no Right. You know things that we don't. And I right? and I remember in twenty twenty, you know, as like all the protests and things were happening, I was like, wow, I was like, you know, 
there's a lot of people out here. And then when I saw that the, the police, I, when I, once I saw that the police were actually like attacking white people, I was like, oh, I was like, this is totally different. Everything is different right now. This is all kinds of, this is all kinds of brand new. You know, it's a totally yeah, different Yeah, and you know, game. it's so funny. My, my <laughs> wife went to help her mom get a haircut the other day in Vegas. She lives in Vegas. Yeah. And she said, the woman cutting her hair said this. She goes, I'm just afraid Antifa's going to come in and steal my grandbaby. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn, woman. First of all, Antifa is not a group. I say I'm the president. I do. Everyone hates me because I say it. Even Proud Boys call me the president of Antifa. Uh, and I put out posts all the time saying, by the way, we're not a real group. We don't have meetings. And I don't know anyone else by name that's part of the group. All we stand for is anti-fascism. I should just put that hmm? in my Twitter. <laughs> I should just be like, I'm Sergeant Cole General of Antifa. Yeah. Right. And Treasury. Right. All I did one day, I said to one of my assistants, can you please make me up some mocks of like me being the president of Antifa? Right. And they made these great things. I was like, okay, Commission I, I'm officially the president. I voted myself then. We're not a real organization. Here we go. Oh my God. That's but I think great. that's kind of funny how they say like Antifa and, you know, is taking over Portland. No. Portland has always had weirdos living in the streets and those weirdos are just acting up. Really, like there's a lot of weirdos. In, if you've never been to Portland, like you don't know if they're homeless or hipsters. Like it's a <laughs> oh, difference no. of patchouli oil, that's it. But you know, I was gonna say something to you. What I meant by you have a different experience, Sierra, than the rest of us. A friend of mine said to me when all of this was happening, he said, Dante, not only can I not feel comfortable owning a gun as a black man. He goes, the one thing I can't do ever, and my sons asked me, is take him hunting. He goes, I'm terrified. That's a setup. I don't want to show up in the anywhere with a gun as a black man, I'll be shot. That's how I feel in America. That's what he said to me. And I had never thought of it like that. You know what I mean? Even being the father of a black daughter, she's not worried about it because I'm her white dad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's um, that blew my mind. And he started listing 20 other things that, you know, he can't do mm -hmm. that he had realized white people can do without even thinking about it. And I guess that's what's called white privilege. Can't listen being to, able music, to do anything you want. Can't barbecue, and, can't run, can't go for a run, can't go for a walk. Can't better walk not home, wear a hoodie. Can't wear, can't buy Skittles. <laughs> can't, right. Can't, but you can't wear a hoodie if you're black. For can't, sure. You better not be wearing a jacket during the day. Uh uh. Can't be caught breathing too hard. I don't know. Right, right. Don't want to sell one cigarette. Yeah. Put absolutely. your life out. Yeah, it's just tough. I mean, we don't have to talk about I just brought this up because I, I I don't know why. It just happened to be on my mind. Um, but we're, you know, I'm here in LA and it is corrupt. And cops know where I live. Do you know what happened that day that um I just told you about where the old man and his grandsons got pulled over? There were four guys. First of all, the wife of one of them just had a baby and called me almost immediately and was like, oh, my God, my husband. I just saw this video that went viral. You're the one who took it. Is my husband OK? I'm like, yes, they let them go, blah, blah, blah. I don't know where he is. You're going to have to call him. So now she and I are friends. But the ver what happened was I came back to my house and that celebrity that was supposed to meet me there was in my yard and my wife had dealt with it and whatever. And I said, sorry, buddy, you're going to have to give me another 10 minutes. I have to edit a very important video and put it on the Internet, which I did. I know that a minute of this is more important than putting up 30 minutes or 40 or an hour and a half. No one's going to watch. So quickly, I was just as fast as I could. I put it up. Five minutes later, my phone rings. And a comedian who is also a cop, who I hadn't talked to in 15 years, is now calling me. And I'm like, hello? He's like, oh, hey, here's these exact words. Hi, Dante. Long time, man. Do you still live at that house at the corner of blah, 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 with all the signs out front? Yeah. Yeah, I always tell all my friends where you live. All the cops when we drive by, I'm always like, yeah, he lives there. That's oh, where no. Dante lives. This is what I'm getting on the phone. He goes, oh, the reason no. I called, you had just put something on the internet. Could you take that down? I was like, no. He's like, but there's two sides to every story. I'm like, but I was there the whole time. There's only one side to this story. And he's like, well, you really should take it down. And he hangs up. Next day, I go outside. My fence is fence color, wood. It's wood color. I don't want any other color. I liked it wood. My daughter, who is a black girl, had written in pink sidewalk chalk on my fence about this big, BLM, about three inches tall. The city of Los Angeles came out and painted my whole fence red. 
Yeah. What? The day after I posted this video, that's how corrupt this city Red? is. That's when it all started. That's when I said, I'm going to film everything. Everything. And I do. I do. Mm -hmm. I got the cops to leave black people alone. What they were doing is black nightclubs on Hollywood Boulevard would shut down at around, you know, 1.30, 2 a.m. And they would wait for them. And they go, hey, you know, uh, we were looking in your car. Can we, can, we, can, we, can we look in your car? They were just asking, can we look in your car? No, there, no reason. And black people were so afraid. They go, okay. So they would all stand there. But now there's a cop car. With lights in a car, people going through it, and six people who just came out of a club standing, waiting to go home. Well, they almost never found anything. But I started posting it every night and saying, hey, look at what they're doing. They're trying to get rid of black people from Hollywood. Well, guess what? They stopped doing it. I'd go out there every night at 1.30, and they stopped showing up. It finally got exposed. Every time I expose something, they stop, but they never apologize. They never take any responsibility and they don't fire those people. Everyone I told you about still has their job. Oh, for sure. It's called qualified immunity. Mm -hmm. It's very scary. Yeah, yeah. What's the next subject, you guys? Oh, uh, well, let me see. <clears throat> I wrote notes <clears throat> before we go on the next subject. Um... You said some really. I talk a lot. Sorry. No, 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 no. It's good. I write, I write down. I try to remember stuff that I think is cool. Um, though I, I do think it's funny because um, you know, Black Panther Party, blah blah blah. They were trying to uh, protect people in their community by carrying guns and protecting their, uh, you know, their community, right, from being attacked by cops. There's this seems like this new way of protecting people with your camera. But what I'll say is, since we're saying it was the fear of black people carrying a gun and going hunting, you know what? Let's get some white people out there on our side carrying guns and just be in protective us and be like, hey, if you attack me, police officer, this white man is going to shoot you. And then, hey, we'll see what happens then in courts. Now, also, too, I know you're looking for a black lawyer, but might not be a bad idea to get a white lawyer. They are. They have. I know. They have clout. I'm money. not afraid to get a white lawyer. They, 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 you know, that note. Yeah. Um, Use the white, use your white privileges best. I mean, I know you do um, uh, by all doing your long. thing. All day long. I, I yell at people all day. Um, it, it's, it's very co conflicting in this situation because I also have, a, it's, how do I, it's a thing I'm still mulling over with like the fact that I need a white savior to help me, you know, get, get equality. Um, but that's something I've been Can trying to interrupt real quick. I'm sorry. I just want to I just want to interrupt real quick. It's something I left out of my story that might add to what you're about to say. I don't want to be a white savior. All I was was security for civil rights. And they had the president of Antifa leading the way. Right. Yeah. And I film everything. Oh, no. I mean, it, but mm -hmm. but all I was going to say. I went to every march. You know who the biggest black star in Hollywood that showed up to my marches was Lou Nell. Mm. Lunell mm -hmm. on the D list. Lunell. Do you know that we have every big black star in the world here in Los Angeles? And not one was there. Not one. Do you know that the other day, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, um, uh, the singer it starts with an A, um, Akira. Mm -hmm. She was getting a star on the boulevard. And that cop I told you about who let me get beat up by the Proud Boys was standing right next to her and Busta Rhymes and a whole bunch of black stars. And I pulled up in my nice convertible as a white man. And I said, hi, everyone. I'm yelling this over there. And they all stopped and the cameras turned on me. And I said, hey, um, this cop right here is the most corrupt police officer. His name is Gutia, blah, blah, blah. I hope you all film him and, you know, do whatever. Not one, I even reached out to Busta afterwards. I was like, hey man, that was me who did that. Why don't you say something about it? Nothing, nothing. Where are black leaders anymore, first of all? And where are black celebrities? Why are they so afraid? Like, so what if you lose half of your popularity? So what? Be a Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. um, I bet it's a little more difficult than a little bit more. Um... I think the same reasons we've been talking, I think the same reasons we've been talking about this are the same reason, you know, we may not see some yeah, but if People, you're a giant no, superstar, like Denzel Washington is not going to get beat up by the police on video. It'll never happen. You know what I mean? When you are a superstar and rich, it just doesn't happen. If you happen to be a rapper and superstar and rich, you'll probably get beaten by the police because they're racist. But racist people like black celebrities that are nice and 
sweet and I'm sorry if I'm being too honest, but that's just facts. It's just facts. Well, no, it's okay. You're, um, you're fine. Um, I'll bring some honesty back too. Um, Oh, going back to that Antifa thing, too, before we jump back to this one. Uh, it might not be a bad idea if you guys get organized as well. Because, you know, um, <coughs> it, it, I think uh, I, I know it's really hard to pin down a big group to, to find who the leader is. But at the same time, sometimes it's OK to fight fire with fire in the sense that organization does bring a little bit of like unity and, and on the same page and I'm not saying, well, I'm, I guess I'm speaking to the president, yes? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can talk to all my constituents. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but, but going back to uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think, again, this is what it's all about, is having people speak and having a chance to. This is, and going back to the white, like, even though you don't mean to be a white savior, Sometimes it happens, you know. Sometimes I don't mean to be, you know, misogynistic. I understand. My action. And, and I hate that term. I get it. Oh my I bad, my bad. You know. I guess um, a. Uh, I'm not trying to be. If I can say no, that. no, no. You, ain't, I mean, but it is. You know what? Wear with pride if you can. Sometimes, you know, like uh, if if that's the case. But uh, I know that I always fight for injustice, though. You know, real quick. My um, when I was in high school, my best friend cheated on his girlfriend, mm -hmm. and the minute he did it, I said "fuck you," and I became best friends with her. Yeah. And we're still best friends to this day. At my wedding, she was my best man. Yeah. And you know what she said about me? It was something that no one's ever said to me and it blew my mind. It was like hearing your own funeral. She said, Dante has never one time gossiped with me. She's like, it's annoying. I love to gossip. And he's my best friend. He won't gossip with me. She goes, I realized something a long time ago about Dante. He only cares about right and wrong. Mm -hmm. And she was right. See, she was okay. right. This, this again. This is why it is so valuable to be a white person and doing that because you you are the person. If we're just speaking truth, like general truths or whatever, like you were saying with the black um, actors and people with money, same thing with the white men, especially that you have so much. Like you are the one that's not getting. Everyone below you is getting injustice. Like they're getting. They're not getting justice. Stereotypical, because I'm sure there's white men that get injustice all the time. But yeah, you should be the one speaking up all the time, every time, all the time. I, I mean, appreciate like, it, that, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, and listen, yeah. I have to say this: as a civil rights activist, the hardest part is the family. I mean, if you watch anything about Martin Luther King or or Malcolm X, you always have to watch the wife because he loves the wife. I love the wife. Malcolm loved the wife. And when they're crying and saying, we don't want you to die, you kind of have to listen. You know what I mean? Because it's it's a hard thing to deal with. Me and my wife had to go through some real stuff. We're in therapy because she was so upset about me almost being killed by Proud Boys or how the police all, you know, hate us. And they came in. They, you know what else they did? I didn't even tell you. These fools, they wrote me that false ticket, right? So I filed a report against them. They uh, claimed I bribed them. They said I was trying to bribe them out of my $65 ticket. I said I would have paid a million dollars for this video, you assholes. And uh, and so the next day I go to start my car and I look and my gas tank's open. I'm like, these cops came over here and put motor oil in my gas tank. I took it directly to my mechanic. He goes, yeah, how'd you know? I'm like, because I just filmed this yesterday. And he's like, oh, yeah, these guys for sure did this. I even showed it to my insurance company, Geico. Geico, I promise you it was the police. Yeah. Just like the next day, my my fence was red. Like, come on. Sorry, I interrupted you again, man. You just keep reminding me of stuff I left out. I ain't tripping. Making my job easier. Um, you lived in a place with the most earth. It, it, it's so funny. I, I think your perspective, because it's so positive. Yeah, I'm writing down this stuff. I'm like, dead parents, earthquakes every day. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing, man, I, you, I have the most blessed life. I do. I have the most blessed life in the whole world. But when you do, it's yin and yang. There's good yes, and every yes. bad. Well, my mother would have laughed at how I, I murdered her. So here's what happened. Okay, here my we are. My father calls me up, and my mother had been dying of cancer for a while. And he said, she went into the cancer coma today. And you all, if anyone's ever had a, a loved one die of cancer, you know the minute they go into that coma, they've got maybe a day, two days left, right? Mm -hmm. So he goes, your mama just went into the cancer coma. You better get up here. I run to, I go to his house. It's three hours away from LA. I run in the house. I'm like, dad, is she alive? And he's like, yeah. I run to her side. I'm kneeling there. I'm, I'm loving on my mom. And I, and it's like, I'm talking to her, telling her everything. And all of a sudden I hear her take her last breath. 
and that was it. And I was like, oh my God. And I just like sat there for a minute. And when I stood up, I heard, <laughs> I had been kneeling on her oxygen. <laughs> if my mother were there, she would have thought it was the funniest thing ever. She would be like, I didn't want to live anyway in a coma. So the fact that you were kneeling on my oxygen is the funniest thing ever. So I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Yeah. I know my mom would find it hysterical. And I'm mm -hmm. glad it happened. I didn't want her to suffer. So good for me. But it was yeah. hilarious. I was afraid. I didn't even tell my dad this until like, I didn't ever tell my dad. He died like six months later. But I told my wife. I felt so guilty. I was like, honey, I'm pretty sure I killed my mom. And she's like, no, you didn't. She was a had cancer. She was in a coma. I'm like, but I'm pretty sure I killed her that day. Oh yeah. Oh. Don't tell the Only cop. Thing. Don't tell the LAPD. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Well, it's too late. Now yeah. it's on oh. video. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I. You can't yeah, get arrested this, for that. You can't be. Uh, you know what? Cops that don't like you will, will <laughs> yeah, do what they will, <laughs> will make up. For, do what they can. They'll do some Africa backs. That's like Republican agenda, like yeah. 101. Just like do some random shit you know you can't do and just see what happens. Wonder something crazy um, that my therapist said to me the other day. I told her that whole story about right and wrong, right? And she goes, why do you think you care about right and wrong so much? And I said, I sat there for a while and finally I said, you know what I think it really was? I grew up in the 70s and every sitcom, like Good Times or What's Happening or whatever, it was always a, a, a lesson. Don't record the Doobie Brothers. It's bad. Or don't do this or don't do that or don't be a bad person, right? So that's how I grew up. And, and she goes, and now tell me about those two television shows. Do they affect you today? And I said, well... Fred Rerun Barry from What's Happening was my opening act for 10 years, and I'm now Jimmy Walker's manager. And she goes, it looks like you found your parents. You found your television parents that raised you. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's a crazy thing. Think about that. That's, family is very real. Blew my mind. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. What are you thinking over there, Brandon? Yeah. Brandon, talk. I'm going to add these restaurants. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, off of what you just said, um, uh, did you not have a, it sounded like you did have a close relationship with your parents. So what, I loved my or parents. I don't, when I was growing not up, assume. I don't think they knew I was there unless you grew up in the seventies. It's, it didn't make sense how parents treated kids. My daughter couldn't name one kid who's drowned. I could name 50 when I was a kid. People didn't watch their kids. Mm. They didn't watch their kids. Gotcha. Kids died all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Shapiro. The we have a uh, the dog. Yeah, Shapiro. Is it a bird? It's okay. Uh, Grandpa has a no, bird. No, we have a dog. Oh. He has a bird. We have a whole rescue Rosie's here at the house. Better. Turtles, lizards, birds, everything. Frogs, fish. Aww. What about you, Barton? What, oh, tell me about your bird, bud. Well, actually, actually, I have four birds, but this particular this particular one doesn't get along with the other three so i have to keep them separate uh, the one of the birds in the other room would kill this one if it can i think uh so i have to really keep them separate and it wow. makes it very difficult to keep two two whole rooms for these birds because they fly around loose during the day and um the other three one of well they've eaten away part of a wall and um I have curtains? to. I, I have curtains that I have to put a lot of clips on to keep them from flying into the uh, dining room where we or the breakfast room where we eat. Uh, otherwise, they'll uh, annoy us the whole time at dinner or um, chew up my uh, recording equipment, which uh, <laughs> I'm not not too happy about. Do you need a bird, by the way? Do you need any more animals? <laughs> They chew through wires, through uh, drywall, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, but but they they are friendly, but but they they don't realize. Like for instance, when they fly at you, you're always afraid they'll hit you in the eye or something. And when they grab Jeez. you with their beak, their beaks are very sharp, and uh, it generally ends up with a little bit of a cut. So there's a lot, but they but they are pleasant, and they're uh, yeah. you get attached to them. You really get some quite attached to the birds just like i guess you would with your wife yeah people who have birds always love them and always say how affectionate they are my my daughter's boyfriend has one and he just loves his little bird 
You mentioned that you have all types of animals now. You said you have lizards, and what else did you mention? So we've got a big rescue here um, in Hollywood. My wife originally, what happened was I bought my, my, my daughter some turtles down in Chinatown, some little red-eared sliders, and they got kind of big. So I had to build a pond outside. Did you outside. say spiders? So one, uh, red-eared sliders, yeah. They're a, a type of, of, of um, turtle. And they're really sweet okay. animals. Uh, they don't bite. They are just real nice. So we had those in the yard. And then people were like, oh, you have a pond. Can I bring over my turtle and give it to you? And that kept happening and happening. And then I built a second pond just because it was my wife was enjoying uh, having ponds. And so we built a second one for fish. And then people brought over more turtles. And then finally, I was like, I, we might as well make a sign, put it outside saying that we have, you know, accept turtles, fish, frogs, and whatever else we'll take. But the rule is only whatever you're okay with living outside. Like if they die from nature, that's not my problem. I will love them, take care of them, feed them. I buy lots of food and worms and whatever type of you know animal it is. They, you know, the frogs come up to me every day at a certain time and I feed them these, uh, mm. I think they're called blacelick lizards that came, um, they're like, I think Floridian or something. But these guys come out every day at like, I don't know, 5.30 and want me to feed them. And this is really cute. It's really cute. It's like now, a little. Do you, do you have any normal pets like uh, dogs or cats or anything like that? Yeah, sadly, I'm allergic <laughs> to cats, but we have two nice dogs, both rescues. Um, one, we found a poodle. Uh, we were driving to a. I was making a movie. I directed a movie that I wrote with my wife called "Bro, What Happened." If you haven't seen it, I think it's up on YouTube. I think I put it up there for free because producers on it were having a fight and no one's buying it. And I'm like, well, screw it. Let's watch it for free, everybody. So um, it stars me, Jamie Kennedy, Bobby Lee, and a bunch of other people. It's really funny. And uh, my wife, Rebecca Cochin, who's a good actress and comedian. And uh, what was the, oh, so we're driving to the, the movie set and my daughter is with me that day and she was about 10 and she goes, daddy, a dog is going to die. I look at the light in front of me and there's a dog in the middle of traffic and literally it's like a movie where cars like he's like going to get killed and I she's screaming her little head off and I've been promising her a dog and today is not the fucking day and I just said Willow scream at him to go home so she screams it he sees her and comes right through traffic up to her door and she's holding onto her lamb he jumps up to the window and he's got like black crazy beard he looks like he's got rabies now he's a white dog i didn't even know this at the time he was just that junkyardy and so he takes her little lammy and they're playing and i said tell him to go home so he sits down and he watches us drive away we drive a mile away to usc when we get onto the campus my daughter goes daddy that puppy followed us sure enough that dog is coming across the campus as fast as he can at my daughter apparently he wow. chased us and found us and we kept him she named him Henry that day. She put a little piece of police tape she found over a garden around his neck and made him our dog. And then uh, her dad, who has Alzheimer's, had adopted a pit bull in Las Vegas. And now we have her because he's in um, hospice, sadly. But she's a beautiful, sweet little black pit bull. She's even sweeter than the poodle. He's a dick. Yeah. He's like a cat. Do, do you uh, have any, uh, you said that you direct uh, movies or plays or whatever. Uh, do you have any uh, any that are you're working on at this time? Yeah, we've got a new movie. I think it's called Karma. Obviously, movies change the name and stuff, but it's a horror movie that my wife is writing, and we already have the funding for. So my company, Golden Artists Entertainment, is going to produce that one next. Um, yesterday, actor James Hong got his star on the um, Walk of Fame. And if you don't know who he is, he loves that I'm the only person in the world who does an impression of him. Um, even when we did the voiceover for him in the movie, he's like, um, you do it for me. And I did. So some of it I got to do. So here's James Hong. If you don't know who he is, shut your eyes and you'll recognize him. Right. Why don't you stay home and make noodles like the rest of your family? That's his Is voice. He from He's Gremlin's got that movie? very distinct voice. He's been in the first thing. So you want to meet the golden thing. child. Yeah. He's like, I love this guy. Um, he thought it was the funniest thing. He made me do his voice all day, every day. He would like get me on the phone calling his daughter. It was so funny. Anyways, a super nice guy. I couldn't be more proud. He's like a hundred years old. I'm not kidding. Um, he even was in that movie Airplane. If you go back and watch it, he's one of the people who sits next to the guy and like kills himself. He plays the Japanese guy in that. 
But yeah, I love that guy. I, I is he the real little, uh, real little short guy? Is he a real little um, short guy? Uh, I would say he's. Wanna... I wouldn't say he's so short. He's he's like five ten, but he's very thin. No, that's oh. not the one. He's I'm been. Thinking of. He okay. was in everything. Yeah. I, I wish I could think of a big thing, but the movie Brilliant. I directed him Brilliant. and Michael Madsen in is Brilliant. called okay. Unfallen. Uh, Michael Madsen's all in all those um, uh, Quentin Tarantino movies and stuff. If you don't know who he is. Yeah. And then I star in it with them. It's about these two twin brothers that are separated at birth and they end up meeting each other in war and how oh. they deal with that situation. It's really kind of a fun, crazy movie um, that we shot in a bunch of different countries. And it was wild. It was wild. Do, do you do you uh, enjoy uh, directing or acting or comedy, doing a, a comedy? What what do you enjoy the most? I guess my favorite thing would be is if I could just direct comedy movies all day, I would prefer that. I love serious acting too, but it's, I love comedy movies. It's so fun to write them. It's so fun to make them. It's fun to be on the set with all these creative people and all of a sudden lines change because, you know, you've got all these great comedians in the same room and they'll say the line a different way. And you're like, I'm taking that. Thank you. And the creative process that happens on a comedy movie is totally different than when people are so serious and needing to be away from each other until they're right there at the last minute so that they can play off each other just the right way. And they don't want 50 rehearsals, whereas comics want to rehearse 50 times so that we can come up with the right joke, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. And for me, it was more rewarding, even though we made a giant war movie you know, which is a feat to do, especially on the budget I had. But for me, this bro, what happened, which sounds silly, is like it's super bad meets uh, the hangover on a college campus. These two kids wake up after a giant, the biggest party of the year. One of them has an arrow kind of in his like this part of his neck. So it doesn't hurt that bad. And he doesn't know why. And the other kid woke up in bed with a girl and he's a virgin and his fiance is coming that day to get engaged. And he's afraid he slept with this girl. So the whole movie is like, People will, they'll wake someone up who might be sleeping and they'll, what happened? They'll like retell it and we go, we see it happen. And, you know, we're seeing five different yeah. versions of the truth. And at the end we see the truth and it's just a fun movie. I like those how, kind of things how, where you see different versions. How yeah. do you, uh, at what, at what stage do you get funding and, and how, uh, in other words, is it just when you show somebody a book of the, of the plot or is it something further along uh, when when you get your funding? So that's a great question because that's the hardest part of any movie is getting it funded. And then the second part mm -hmm. that's the hardest is getting it sold. So what my company does, we learned from, and you're not going to believe this. My wife was the star for that company that makes Sharknado. They're called the Asylum. But she was like their first big star. If you go through all their old videos, she's on the cover of all of them. She was the woman who always killed the killer in all their stupid horror movies, right? So yeah. we learned from them. What they did was they were making $50,000 movies and they had a distributor and they would call the distributor and say, what do you need? And the distributor would say, we need this. And you go, all right, we'll write a script for that. Then they'd send the distributor that. If we make this for this amount, can you sell it? Yep, you've got a deal. So now they don't have to take their movie to 50 festivals and hope someone buys it or you know some convention here in LA. It's pre-sold. And there's no better way to go to someone and say, would you like to invest in my movie? We already have a distributor and it's pre-sold and he can show you the analytics on it. I can show you that, yeah. that you know, my distributor, he worked for Blockbuster for 50 years and he's at his own company. So he's not going to rip you off for your silly amount of money. You know what I mean? So that's how we do it. And for me, couldn't be better. We've never lost anyone a dime so far. And I don't ever want to. I don't want to be that guy who goes, I really want to make a movie about silkworm farmers so that I can win an Academy Award or whatever. No, I want to. I, I, if you put money in my company, Barton, there's no way I'm going to lose a dime for you because mm. I don't want to. That's my main goal. Like, that's why I made Bro What Happened. I did on 50,000. Oh. If you watch it, it looks like 5 million. I just knew it had to sell like a killer and every star had to be in it and 50,000 cameos in it. Ah! Are you okay? Yeah. It sounds better than the stock market. Yeah. Sorry, you guys. Oh, my camera fell off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everyone's Everyone okay. I, I just said it sounds better than the stock market. Yeah, it does. 
you know, because it's I don't like having anything unsure. And here's what we do in, in Hollywood. You have to put their money in a separate account. So like their money doesn't go into my bank account, it goes into an account that I can't even touch unless the person running it is, you know, says we all can and it has to all go towards a movie. And that's how we run things. Everything at my company is by the book. You know, today my assistant um, did something and I was like, oh, don't ever do that. You know, let me handle it because I, you know, he was like, oh, Dante's unavailable. I'm like, I'm not unavailable. I was just in a meeting. Just tell him I'm in a meeting. You know, it was earlier today. Mm -hmm. I said, tell him I'll call him back. But it was like, I guess I was unavailable. But just next time say, oh, he's in a meeting. We'll call you back because I have a problem with even fibbing a little, if that makes sense. Like I've never lied to my wife well, 50, my daughter and never will. Not once. 50,000 sounds like a very just seed money to get started because it takes a lot more money than that to make a film. Well, let me tell you this. I'm going to break I'm going to break some yeah. rules here. So my movies don't go to theaters. Theater movies, you've got to make they've got to be 50 million or more these days. 20 million maybe is the the right. bottom. So there's this terrible spot that you don't want to be in as a businessman making movies. It's I would say 500,000 to 20 million. If you're in that area, you're you're set to lose money. You're set to lose money unless you've got the biggest stars in the world and it's some big movie. Other than that, that little area is the death spot. So if you make a twenty million dollar movie or above, it's going to probably hit theaters, and you're probably going to make a hundred million. So when we make a fifty thousand dollar movie and we make it look like a five million dollar movie, and someone makes a five million dollar movie that looks like a five million dollar movie, and we're in the same category. I'm going to make, let's say, 600000 on this $50,000 movie, and they're going to lose $4,400,000. So that's the difference of me making a $50,000 movie that looks like $5 million and someone making a $5 million, is we get paid the same, these idiots. Wow. So if you're getting 600000 so am I, and I'm making so much and you're losing so much. Dante, uh, I don't want to be rude. I have an obligation, so I have to go off okay, right now. Martin, but it was a pleasure. Um, my my co-hosts are great and I'm um, not worried about very it, nice buddy. to talk with you. Thank you so much for having very me. Very nice talking with Martin. you. Take care of those birds, bud. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye bye. See you, Bye, Grandpa. Bye. Oh man, he's gonna leaves, get you I'm going. Grandma. Grandma. Yeah. Oh, fuck, Grandpa. <laughs> what were we doing? <laughs> now that no one's oh, watching, I'm about to just do the worst. Oh, be the worst host I can be. Uh... And if Fine is here, I'm gonna be there on Tuesday. What's up? No, I think he was in the bathroom. What's up? I'll be driving through Queens next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Oh, It'll dope. Be here Tuesday. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking my family for the first vacation ever because I work too hard. So yeah, my daughter, I'm taking her to see two Broadway shows. We're going to some weddings. We're going to have a great time. Ooh, oh, wow. And I meet some new clients. I've got some clients getting married, family getting married, um, blah, blah, blah. It's it's going to be so fun. This so the first fun. time your, this is the first time in the NY? Uh, yeah, it's going to be Willow's first time, my daughter, in, in wow. Wyoming. I've been there a billion times. Billion, yeah. One time, I, oh no. So there's something, I don't know if it's on my bio, but I'm the only guy who does warm-up for movies. You know when you go to like a TV taping, there's some warm-up guys like, hey everybody, if we're going to have a fun time, and there's the applause sign, and blah, 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 and they tell things. <laughs> so I do that on movies. Anytime they hire like a thousand extras, they only pay a hundred of them. So if they have a thousand or twenty thousand, only a hundred are being paid. The rest are being asked to be an extra in a movie. If they want to mm -hmm. leave the front row in their red shirt, we're screwed. So my job is to keep them there all day. So we give away giant prizes and blah blah blah. But I was gonna say I've been to New York lots of times just for that. Like I was in Yankee Stadium for anger management with um, Jack Nicholson and Adam Sandler. I've done it on like every Adam Sandler movie. Um, I did that. What was the Biggie Smalls movie? Um, that they filmed there. Notorious? Yeah, Notorious. I did that one there. Um, oh, a whole bunch, man. So I, I come out there a lot for that kind of stuff or to meet up with clients or whatever. Ah. Or do stand-up. Um, you know, but most stand-up comics don't go to L.A. or New York to do stand-up. We live in L.A. and New York to work out our stand-up. You don't get paid here. Like I tweeted today, I said, no comedy club in New York or L.A. pays more than 15 to $25 for a regular spot. They might pay more on a weekend for a giant room or something. But for a regular spot, if you go see me or the biggest, you know, Kevin Hart tonight at the, at the comedy store, we're both going to get 15 bucks. That's, that's it. But the problem is all those prices came in in like 72. 
when everyone was making a dollar eighty an hour, and you know, a fifteen dollar spot sounded great. I don't even have to work for one day. I could just mm -hmm. get fifteen dollars for telling dick jokes. Well, now parking's twenty five dollars. We're losing ten. Yeah. They need to up prices. How how do you manage uh, working out your material and writing and all of that? I mean, it sounds like you're working 25 hours a day with directing and, you know, all that kind oh, of thanks, stuff. Man. Yeah, I actually posted this too the other day. Someone actually asked me a question similar. They said, wait a minute, how can you be a manager if you're performing in, in Reno right now? Mm -hmm. And I said to them, because I work from seven in the morning until seven at night every day. I tell Ooh. dick jokes on the weekends for one hour a night each night. If my clients don't think the other 23 hours of my time are valuable enough, they don't have to join my fucking company. Yeah. And as far as writing jokes, honestly, man, I'm at the point now where it's like when I first started, it was hard. You had to figure it out. Now, I just know if it's going to work or not. Comics, I, mean, I taught classes for like 20 years, comedy classes. And it's like my wife will ask me three jokes. That one's going to kill. That one's going to be okay. And that one's going to bomb. She's like, but I still want to do it. Don't do it. Sure enough. Killed. It was okay. Bomb. Because it's what I do. You know what I mean? It's like, that's all I know. If you need me to do anything else, build a house, it's going to be a cricket house. I don't know how it will turn out. I know how to write jokes. I know how to direct movies and do this kind of stuff. Sadly, this is all I've done since I was 15. And uh, I'm well educated, but not on any other subjects. Sure. Storytelling is it. That's that's it, though. That's, that's mm -hmm. such, a, such a big deal. I mean, oh, thanks. Yeah, I agree, man. It. We're built around our society is built around storytelling. Yeah, pandemic happened. Everybody locked down. It's all all people did. What's that one book everybody loves? The Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that some story? I've heard of it. <laughs> I've heard of it. I've heard of it. I mentioned on a uh, podcast yesterday. I was on uh, one of my clients. Do you guys know who Stuttering John Melendez is? He was on the Howard Stern show and stuff. Anyway, he um he has a big podcast right now. It's very political, and um. Wait, what did you just say that made me? Oh, the Bible. I told him, I said, did you know that there are books of the Bible that are not in the Bible? That we all know were written by the same people. They're just sitting around in museums and they don't want to ever add them to the Bible because it just didn't fit the scenario. Yeah. But that's crazy. I heard about that. You're right. Yeah. All the same apostles wrote it as part of the Bible and people just took it out. And we know over time how people are. You know, like when you are, like if Donald Trump were president 2000 years ago, he would have changed the Bible here and there. Then the next Pope changes it. And then King James had his version. You know what I mean? Like a version. What do you mean your version? You, you know what a version, pops into King James? You know what pops into mind is when you're just talking about like how you rather make comedies instead of acting a regular movie. So now I'm wondering when they were writing this Bible, they were just like, should we keep doing this over and over again and keep playing these jokes or should we just like <laughs> be good ass serious here? <laughs> They're, like, um, they're doing jackass yeah. and people bought it, right? Right, yeah, they're like, all right. Jackass let's, forever. <laughs> let's make a new in, one. In, in <laughs> we have the old one. Had yeah, exactly. I remember, I listened to something about, it was about archaeology and this like trash archaeologist and they would talk about how like you can find so much information in, in you know, waste baskets and whatnot. But they had find, like they go back to the, I guess the days when the Bible was being written and there's all these papers that they had found that had been thrown away. Um, but they're like, but they were still kind of written for the Bible. So should we take them? Uh, should they not be here? Should they right. should be in it? Um, were, was it important? Was it not? Yeah, I, I, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah. Oh, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Who knows? What are your thoughts? Uh, we know guys? people like stories. I, I just think that people like stories, and I don't know. I mean, that's what Mormonism is, right? It's like the an amendment to the Bible. Like is it? Uh, I I think so. Yeah. Mm. You know how just, that all went down, right? How like Joseph Smith was like a 15 year old kid and he told his girlfriend, hey, guess what? I found this crazy hat. And when I look into it, God tells me a new Bible. And then he's like, oh, okay. He said this and she writes it all down, right? And then they lost it. His friend stole it and said, can you repeat all that? I want to see if it's the same thing you were reading. So he, he did it again and came out a whole different story. But anyway, yeah. they follow all of that. Wow. Yeah. No, that wasn't some kid trying to get laid, you guys. Come on. He was 15. Wow. Are, are you religious, Dante? I was an altar boy, and I am not against religion in, by any means. I believe in God. Um, and I don't even know why I do, except for the fact that when I've prayed before things, miracles happen for me. And I mm. can't explain them. 
but I think that man-made religion is the worst thing on earth. It's killed more human beings than anything else. It has. Yeah. Man-made religion has killed more humans Quite than mosquito. anything. It is. It's the reason for racism. It's the reason for slavery. Even is in the Bible. It's okay to enslave anyone of a foreign country, just not your own. That's all it says. In the it says it in the Bible. <laughs> Don't get to enslave others as um, long as they don't come from your country. There's a lot of things in the Bible that it's like, why are we picky and choosy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I've seen people eating, still eating at a trim. barbecue talking about how they hate gay people. <laughs> pork, sir? Did you just have some shellfish? Because gay people and eating shellfish or pork are both the same abomination in the Bible. Same. Is that a is right. that a cotton is that blend? More than one thread in I'm my clothing? You. If you're doing that, young lady, we have to stone you to death. It's telling right now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah man, yeah. I know the Bible backwards and forwards, and that's what made me not want to be religious, you know? Because I had too many questions. Mm. And you know what a, a nice priest said to me one time, because I was always in trouble. Always. He said to me, Dante, I said, Man, I don't believe any of this. I said, Come on, man, there's no boat today. They could fit every animal, and this guy was in one spot. There's no way he could find, like, things in California or where, you know, I'm, like, naming all these lizards where I live. I'm like, where were those were those lizards over there? He goes, Dante, here's what it is. He goes, I believe all of these are fables to help us all be better people. Can you live with that? And I said, that's a good way to look at it. If I can look at these, yeah. it's just stories. Someone made up, you know, some dude was in a, a, someone's, a whale's stomach. Sure. Then I'll, I'll buy into it because I like Peter Pan. That's a nice story. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the things in that Old Testament, if white people especially could see the people that wrote these things down, the dark scan, <laughs> how they look like yeah. Al-Qaeda or whatever these people are afraid of with their twangs, right? You're from Atlanta. You know what I'm talking about, man. I mean, thank God Georgia isn't as bad as it used to be. At least Atlanta's black now, and there's some good places. Like, Dahlonega doesn't seem as bad as some other places, but I'm just so tired of, like, I feel like we went backwards, you guys. People are burning books, worrying about racism. After we've already had a black mm -hmm. president and we moved on with that, and people, we're in a blended, more blended country than, like, how did we go backwards? How are laws being unwritten? You know, why? I feel like... Here's what I feel like, and it makes me very sad. I feel like mm -hmm. I, I used to be both. I think I said that at the beginning, that I voted for the best person. I was Republican and Democrat. Not anymore. Not once the Republicans showed me that they're racist because I can't ever be okay with that. That's just not on my radar. And so I think the, the problem... <sighs> dumb people in dumb states think that they are trying to own libs by changing the laws. Oh, you don't like abortion? Then we're gonna put it back. No, dummy, you're not. You're gonna bring it back to the states and the states are gonna turn it over in your dumb state. You think California will ever over, you know, overturn Roe versus Wade? It's never gonna happen, ding dong. You're not owning the libs, you're owning yourselves. You're owning your daughter, you're owning your wife. You're, you're only hurting yourself. Do you know that, I don't know how it is in Georgia, but I perform all over the country and it drives me crazy. I'm like, oh, can I get a drink? Oh, sorry, not on a Sunday. What? I can't drink on a what? And they're like, I know, we hate it too. Then change it. No, but it's a law. Yeah, I know. But your grandma made up that law in the 20s when she was tired of her husband not coming home. So they made up this law that he can't drink on Sundays because he has to go to church. So change it. Just change it. Why are you going to another county to go buy goddamn booze, man? You're grown ups. Your grandma's dead, man. I mean, that's dead. They, they, they're not. They're not going to change it because it is too benefit. Like, is it, it benefits them too much? The laws are, are said to to benefit them in, a, in the long run. But they really so don't. They're all there they, to hurt them. Uh, here's here's the other thing I said, and this is being. I don't want anyone to take this in the wrong way because I said this online and. Um, a lot of uh, black people fought over this. They're like, Dante didn't mean it like that. He means it like white people would freak out. They want women to have a baby, even in the case of rape or incest. And I said, wait till those white people who don't think their wife or daughter is ever going to be raped, is raped by whatever race they hate. 
I said, if they get a black race rape baby, are they going to ask her to not abort it? You know what I mean? And then some, I also posted mm -hmm. some woman said something so great. She said, my body is not here for someone who can't have babies to take my baby. Right? You know what I mean? Like, it's the truth. That's what they want them to do. Yeah. Well, if you can't have it, you yeah, need to right give it away. That. I am not a factory for people who can't make babies. I, I read about that. Do you remember what that came, what exactly that came from? I know it's from uh, something that uh, Coney Barrett wrote. You mean that quote? Yeah, about the, the oh, domestic Oh, I don't know who infant. wrote it. I just, I just reposted it. And I think the word was actually incubator. My body is not an incubator for people who can't have their own children. Well, I know that's been like an actual, um, that's been like an actual like subject of like contention because uh, Amy Barrett or whatever her name is, um, Dummy three. Call me, yeah. Dummy three. Yeah. She uh, she wrote <laughs> something. She wrote something in the in her in her like legal past as a professional about how I think yeah I think it's like she comp she was looking at like old census data or something like that and she was talking about it was about how the the quote is like you know what let me just find it let me just find it instead. yeah find it and by the way I want to say something while you're looking it yeah. up. If I keep licking my lips, it's because they are burning. For two days, I have had the worst chapped lips, and I watched myself on video on John Melinda's show yesterday, and it looked like I was on crack the whole time. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's starting to get Isn't dry. That yeah, they're burning, and I do not have chapstick because my daughter steals it. It's the worst. Okay. Did you find it? Okay, so I'm on Snopes, and Snopes is saying no, they didn't argue against abortion in order to boost this quote domestic supply of infants but it comes from oh i know what you're talking yeah, about yeah amy yeah, yeah, coney yeah, barrett that. and in alito's draft uh they said that the u.s needs quote a domestic supply of infants to meet needs of parents seeking to adopt and that those who would otherwise abort must be made to carry to term giving children up for adoption so uh yeah she wrote a brief about abortion and she noted that she noted that and she argued that mothers must birth their baby and give it up for adoption to be market demands okay these are the tweets where did right come i did from? hear that someone said for market demands and maybe yeah. that's the part scope snopes is saying is, is false but maybe i still i also read something where they're like you know if they uh, bring back abortion and just they named a couple of states. They were like, that's 600 and something extra babies in those already welfare states. Yeah. You know, like who's going to take care of these kids? The people, people who, you know, you never hear about any of these like weirdos that these perverts that, you know, are worried about, you know, where you have your babies and when you have your babies and how many babies you have. You never hear about any of those perverts actually adopting any babies. I mean, they definitely shouldn't because they're deranged, but you never hear about them actually doing anything like that. By the way, um, I am a Hollywood elite, I guess. I own a business in Hollywood. We don't eat babies. If someone ever hurt a child around me, I'd murder them. Are you really? sure? <laughs> have you have you actually visited the Where basement? Where are we getting these babies? Have no you, one, have no you visited, I mean, Dante, have you visited the basement babies. of a pizza parlor in person to see it right. for yourself? Have you yeah, these seen the- people, they, they get they get the answer no to all their own answers and they still believe it. So you're sure you, know, you haven't even... seen anybody, you haven't seen Bill Gates or anyone, you know, you know, literally sucking the blood out of a baby like a vampire? Mm. Are you no, sure? No, not lately. I, I, you, yes. I, I would have filmed Even it. playing it off on like Halloween, not right. Not like a... Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Not even okay. playing interesting, around. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. People here care so much about like, that's why we have homeless here because we treat them pretty well here in Los Angeles. Do you know the guy, there's a homeless man who lives across the street from me. I have a house. He's been there for 12 years. I know him by name and I don't want him to move. And I'll tell you why. He goes around every single day and cleans the entire neighborhood. He does. And he's never done anything wrong. Not yeah. once. And everyone goes there and is nice to him and feeds him. And if he wasn't here, we would have leaves and trash and everything else in the street that would never get cleaned up. And he has been a better neighbor than my next door neighbors. Yeah. Damn. We walk our dogs, just so you know, in Hollywood yeah. at midnight. If my wife says, oh, you're too, you know, you're too busy, I'll go do it. I don't even think twice. We are not unsafe in Hollywood at all, at all. And I hate to say this. I'll bring up the cops mm -hmm. again real quick. I don't know if you, I'm going to throw out some numbers that I'm sure you guys haven't heard, but they will blow your mind. 54% of the Los Angeles budget goes only to the LAPD. 
what? How much? 54% of the entire budget for Los Angeles, it's in the billions, goes to the LAPD. I was, you know where that money should go? Half of it should go to the homeless. It should. And I'll tell you how we could fix things. If we had housing and we had mental health and doctors and nurses and professionals to get them off of drugs and drug treatment centers set up for free for them and all of these things, just like they do in other first world countries that I go to that don't have homeless people sitting on the ground everywhere. Um, it works for them. It can work for us. And we just don't do it. Our politicians, every single one of them says they're going to do it and they don't. And Here's what I was going to say. I listen to a police scanner every day just to see what's happening in my neighborhood and whatever or, and or see if I need to go film something that. And uh, nine out of ten calls are, uh, we've got a homeless guy holding a stick. Someone called that in. There's a homeless woman talking to herself near a light. We're afraid she might step in traffic. Just dumb shit like this. Oh, there's a homeless guy staying in the middle of traffic, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, we you know, make, like, person eating millions of dollars, meat. billions it takes for them to just to go on all these stops. If those people were just actually being treated as human beings and helped by the city of Los Angeles, we wouldn't have to. That's why I say defund the police. We don't need 54% to go to them. How about 25% and we'll have enough cops and we'll use the rest for the homeless and for our streets to clean them up and do other good things with them because we really don't need the, the cops we have. I saw a man, I heard a man stole candy from a liquor store, right? And I was like, oh shit, that's right where, where I am. I'm gonna run over there and catch this on film. I get over there as a helicopter and there are four cop cars. And sure enough, this man had stolen some candy from a liquor store, not by gun or anything else. He just ran out, grabbed some candy. They are displaying it on the ground. There's about $8 worth of candy. I wanted to say, hey, everybody, I'm going to give this money to the owner. Plus, he gets his candy back. Why don't we get all of you to go fight crime somewhere else? <laughs> but they didn't. They were there for a half hour over a guy who stole a little bit of candy. It's not even a felony. It's a misdemeanor. It's a ticket, maybe. maybe. Right? Yeah. And 54% needs to go to these guys? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I'm having some. I'm having some suspicions that <laughs> um, that a lot of things you said, but I, you know, I, I'm one. They're probably like what? Ugh, there's so much stuff you say. I'm trying to go back to all of it. Going, uh, going back to abortions and states and it's shooting them in their own foot. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's shooting them in their own foot. I think. I think if we follow the dollar. People, a lot of people are making money off of the off of the um, off the mistreatment and the and the babies that are being born that have nothing to do with them, but they're getting money for it. Because if they weren't, if it was, it's a system. It's, yeah, Correct. the same thing with I would think the homelessness. It 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 would be something that would, if it was truly profitable for a politician or the government to get rid of homelessness, I think they would. May, you've heard the George Carlin joke about the war on homelessness. It's essentially the same thing, you know, throughout the beginning of time till now. Um, there, there's not much. Uh, there's they're not going to do no war on homelessness because there's no real profit in it. There's no real. Money. I mean, I guess you're 100 percent right in the grand scheme of things. You would think because I thought from when I was young and still to this day, I'm like the more people that have houses, the more educated everyone is, the more money our whole system will make. I don't, I, the more I'm seeing in this world, the more I'm like, I think people are just kind of greedy and they can't see that <laughs> or they don't want to see it. It's like, you know, um, but um, yeah, I think those it's always follow the money finest. Mm -hmm. You're right. Um, you're a hundred percent right. And guess what? I, I brought this up for years to anyone who would listen and I'll, I'll explain what I'm going to say. It's about the homeless and why they're here and what happened. So about 10 years ago, I said to my wife, we don't have any homeless in LA anymore and there's no more um, graffiti. And I said, do you want to know why, dear? And I said, it's because everything in L.A. costs so much that even gang members, parents and themselves were able to take this home they bought for 30000 and it's selling now for a, a million and a half. And now they're wealthy. They don't need to gangbang anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't need to spray paint anymore. Everyone in L.A. is wealthy because of their home value now. Mm -hmm. So what happened in L.A. is all of a sudden I started seeing homeless everywhere. 
after years of never seeing them and never seeing graffiti. And now graffiti's coming back. And I said to my wife, something crazy is happening. We have to figure it out. So I started reading about it. <clears throat> a judge made one weird mistake that she could correct, but never did. She basically said, you cannot go after the homeless stuff anymore. Meaning here's the rules. Homeless can go anywhere they want as long as they stay, have enough room on the sidewalk for a wheelchair to get by. They don't pee, poop, or do drugs, and they don't sleep during the day. If they don't break those rules, they can stay wherever they are. That's what a judge said. She meant it more as for Skid Row, but everyone on Skid Row went, oh, we don't have to stay at Skid Row anymore. So they went everywhere. They moved out of Skid Row because the law said now they can. So now what's happening is we have more people that aren't necessarily homeless in LA, but people who move to LA, and I've heard this from real people who tell me, go, hey man, I'm a comic. I moved from Georgia. I live in a tent, man. I'm not homeless. It's just easier for me. I don't want to pay 3000 a month rent. Mm -hmm. So I have a gym membership. I get up every day. I go to the gym. I take my shower, blah, 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 blah. Other people live in their vans here or they're, you know, so many people do that. Now, the, the other half are homeless and are some are crazy and some are on drugs or both. Um, but here was what happened. And here's where you follow the money. Finest. I said to everyone, here's what's happening, you guys. They could change this law, but they're not. They want them in our neighborhoods because values are going down a little. And now all of a sudden in Hollywood, we never had construction because it's Hollywood. It's being preserved. Now, every third home was torn down. Every third home, these historic homes, so they could build these giant new apartment buildings. And they started coming up everywhere. Every street had 10 constructions on it. 10 everywhere. There's nowhere to drive, nowhere to get anywhere. And I went, oh my God, our mayor, he did all of this. He is, uh, 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 what do you call those people that sell property or what was there any property? You know, those get, yeah, so this is what he does. This was his job before he became mayor. So I figured it out, man. He's having the homeless bring down property value and telling all of his friends, come in, man, I'm gonna make it easy for you to build here, do this, do that. All these people have done it. He's leaving the homeless here. And now these guys are not filling up their apartment buildings. There's a place across the street from me that's been there for six years. It's only half full, half full. And it's in like the prime of Hollywood. There's places that, you know, still have signs, have zero people in it. So the plan, here's where you follow the money, my friend. Mm -hmm. All these people are going to go, man, my property value is down since the homeless are still here and no one's moving in. And the mayor and all of his buddies are going to say, you know what? I'll buy all those buildings back from you for half price if you'd like. Then when he does that, after he's mayor, once he goes away and he buys back all this property and his friends do, then they will all get together and make sure the homeless problem goes away so that their property values go up. All these investors that he made go out and build the property are just suckers to his plan. So I told this to a woman at the LA Times and she goes, I'm investigating everything you just said. She's like, I'm already on that trail and everything you said is true. How, how is it um, if the overwhelming majority of LA is um, very liberal and I, I would assume like not interested in funneling all this money to the police state how how are the citizens that are voting like falling for these republicans that put a d next to their name and why, why is change that's, that's why because they scare them because just like if you guys see something about la the police here send out these things right now because they're hey vote for a new police commissioner vote for a new city attorney and everything has picture of black people doing smash and grab or something like that, <laughs> where they're like, oh, crime is up in LA. And I wanna be like, I listen to it every day. It's down in LA. They want you to think it's up because they're running for office. That's it, period. That's the answer, man. Yeah, because they, 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 the, they have the ad money and they're, they're already sort of rich to begin with. They're able to... Right, people vote. here in LA, the smart ones know how to vote and the dummies vote for the wrong people. And sometimes we get the wrong people, sometimes we get the right ones. And hopefully we'll get one that cares about the actual homeless. And, you know, there's a guy right now. I'm going to say his name if that's okay. Yeah. His name is Craig. I, th I think his last name is Greeway. I want him to win. And I like Sharon Bass. She's a black woman who's a congressman here. And she was, I saw her with Bernie and stuff when I went to go see Bernie. And she was, she's the one I wanted. But then when I met with this man, he told me her record. He told me his record. And I like this guy's record better. And he's like, so you would rather vote for a woman who's black 
who might not do her job over me when I'm saying I'll do everything you're asking. And I was like, wow, I will have to mention this to my wife and we'll get back to you. And he was right. Of course I want to vote for the black woman who is a congresswoman who was with Bernie and everything else. But he was right. When I looked up her record, she has been, she's disappeared. All she's been doing is trying to get other people elected and she hasn't done her job. We all know politicians like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to go back to abortion, but before that, I did want to ask you, what is your experience been like talking to other white people about like your activism and different things? I've had and... the worst life because of it. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. White people treat me like shit. I lost half of my family and half of my friends over this. I did. And I didn't care. I still don't care. Fuck them. I'm serious. If you're racist, I'm glad you weeded yourself out, fool. If you can't see what I'm doing, you know, and you can't watch these videos and see that they're like, why are you filming them? Just leave them alone. But, you know, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. If those were, you know, I even said to one of my friends who got on me who was Jewish and they were like, I said, what if those were Jewish people that the police were killing every day and beating every day on TV? What if those were Jews? You would be calling me an anti-Semite if I wasn't out there marching for you. So you better get your ass out there for everybody else. And I changed her mind. So that was good. Yeah. Because it's true. Mm -hmm. If yeah. Jewish people were being murdered by the police every day, they would call anyone an anti-Semite who was not out there marching with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or not speaking about it. Or right. And, I'm, to, like, and I'm, I live the, in the Jewish house. Like, the best so way don't to get say mad. it. My daughter is a black Jew and my, my wife is a Jew. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, nah, and also, I mean, I have conversations with this about to white people or people that, um, just random people that whatever want to fight the cause or want to be helping. Um, I, I think it is, I, I appreciate you speaking from your chest with the, some truth to it because I think that's the only way we're going to also be able to, um, actually have some good conversations. Like, I, I what's the word? Yeah, no, I, I've talked to a lot of like white liberals or people that are, are very like, oh yeah, BLM. But are they, I, I think sometimes um, they want to tiptoe around. That guy's penis is so small, did you hear? Yeah. He yeah. told yeah. him drove by. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, now nah, they're just so they're so scared to say anything wrong or what's on their real like the real feeling about like maybe the white person does feel like we need more black actors to 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 support but they're so afraid to say anything but i i think again this is me putting a lot on on my white folks but you kind of got a responsibility to go ahead and say that and get and get told that you're wrong all right but it's it's a part of you i think we're beyond being an active listener and trying to sit there and like i want to say what's what's um right and to, to the point where we all need to start learning like like actually here's my problem yes uh -huh. you know as well as i do i have I've always, and I'm not that guy who goes, oh, I have black friends. I always had black friends, real black friends, where, you know, it's like, I have two friends, one's black, one's white. Like, you know what I mean? Like some people just say that dumb shit. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been around black people. And so being around black people, I have always seen that there's always infighting, even with my daughter being light skinned. She couldn't fit in with the black people. She couldn't fit in with the white people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we all see it. And there's always been infighting. I remember in the 90s, if you were light-skinned, people were like, oh, light-skinned, oh, that's the 80s, blah, 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 and, you know, whatever. And then anything I post, same thing. Black people will always fight on my page over the same issue. And I think what bothers me is, like, I just wish that when it came to race, racism, police brutality, and things like that, that we could all just go, let's forget about what color anyone is. And remember, we're all humans, and we're, we're really just here to protect each other and be nice to each other. And, you know, the color of someone's skin doesn't change the fact that all they want is love, health, happiness, safety, and freedom for themselves and their family and friends, right? Yeah. That's all we all want. Love, health, happiness, safety, and freedom. That's it. If you have those five things, you're the happiest person in the in the world, even if you have no money, because with love, health, happiness, safety and freedom, you only need enough money to get by. Yeah. Um, there, there's two. another thing I want to say off of that. And then another thing you said, but the one thing about that is it, it makes me think of you talking to that police officer that was like, nothing wrong happened here. You're you know, you're, you you it's what you're saying is like everyone has the right 
to the pursuit of happiness and justice, right? That's what we, in an ideal world, we'll, we'll have that. And these cops are supposed to provide that chance for me to get the same justice as everyone else. But they don't because we're not in the inner circle. Because there's so many divides of I'm a cop, you're not a cop. You're black, I'm white, you have BLM. And I'm, I'm wondering, uh, yeah, still big on trying to think about how we can, because I agree, we're all human and we all have the that, that cop that was like, what was you, my friend? Still goes home to his his family and still probably wants to support them and doesn't feel what was. And he probably thinks he's a nice man. And yeah. He probably thinks I'm a fucking idiot and he's never done anything wrong. Because part of the problem with police is a corrupted system corrupts people, but they don't see it because it's okay mm -hmm. in their community. So I saw a video. It was so powerful. Cops pulled over a guy they didn't know was a cop, an ex cop. And he went. And they said, give me this, give me that. And he's like, no, I'll give you my name and that's all you get. And they go, no, you have to do this. He's like, actually, I used to be a cop. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll let you go. He's like, no, no, come back here, guys. You just told me I had to do this. And I told you I didn't have to. That makes you guys corrupt. And they're like, what? We're not corrupt. And he goes, you just told me I must do something. And when I told you I was a cop, you went, oh, sorry. And went, went to let mm -hmm. me go. Right. He goes, I promise you, you're in a corrupted system. He goes, I promise you, there's not one of you that hasn't changed your report slightly to make it sound like it was better for you than it is the victim or, or the person you arrested or something like that. He goes, we all do it. Or he'll back you up that this guy may have had a gun or you thought he did, even though neither of you saw it, you were just scared and he shot. He goes, that's corruption. He goes, backing people up in a time when you don't have to or, or standing up for someone just because he's another cop makes you corrupt. Yo, and it does. I'm about to jump in because I know I know Brenda's mad at me for always saying this, but it's, I'm gonna keep going. I, I this is the big problem with capital, like capital being the issue of like a lot of the issue of corruption. Um, I mean, there is a lot of race and stuff that goes into it too, but I think that needing capital, I don't know, like someone protecting their job or doing what's doing something. Like if a cop was like, let me do something that's not corrupt, or they notice something's corrupt. They may not do it because they might lose their job. And a lot of it seems like stem from this whole, again, follow the dollar um, of why they're doing the things they're doing. Because I, I don't know, I feel too sympathetic for the average person think that they are pretty good people for the most part. You know, um, I think they're swayed by like, again, that's like if you're a cop, there's 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 a lot of things going on, too. It's, it's, it's deep. Yeah. But um you're so right, man. And I get there. I get it. And I don't I never try to say that I hate the cops. You know, people are always like, oh, I hate them. They should all die. I'm like, you won't find me saying that. What I say is I hate a corrupted system and I hate yeah. bad cops. And what I used to write um, that kind of went a little viral and some people, you know, used to wear shirts and stuff, the things I would say. But one of the things I said was 20 bad cops being protected by 2000 bad cops is 2020 bad cops. Mm -hmm. And it was mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth. Yeah. Because that is true. If 2000 people are defending those bad cops, you're all bad. Yeah, no, it's it's real. I, I've been I really try to look into stuff about like why I should or not should not feel like I should the the cops should be def, um, defunded. But I keep leaning back on the defunding part because of what you're saying of like the system's corrupt. Defunding just means it doesn't say get rid of the police. Yeah, uh, it means they don't need their whole budget. Yeah. Do you know in LA? <laughs> I haven't put out the video yet, but they bought a whole bunch of BMWs. These little tiny ones that are supposed to be hybrids. Tons of them. These were going to be these police cars that were going to be uh, the right around towns. Do you know that they didn't like them? So they just sort of gave them to their own employees at a cheap discount with our money. That's uh, They drive BMW bikes in L.A., Yeah. these cops. They buy tanks and shit. Why, what is that for? There's no army. We have an army. Yeah. That means that those tanks and shit are for us, yeah. the people of Los Angeles, not to protect us from... It's to get us. Mm -hmm. So here's, I want to go back to one thing, man. You got me fired up. <laughs> Let's do it. I lost half of my friends and family over this issue. I still do. People are so mad. I lost. People are even like, you own a business. You're, how much money are you losing? Tons. Tons. Millions. I lost millions. I'm not joking. Millions. There were people. You know who the ShamWow guy is? <laughs> ShamWow, laptop, all that <laughs> yeah. stuff. I, yeah. I partnered with him on everything. We, we had a big fight over Republican shit. And he lost out on that's that's money I can still be making. <laughs> Not gonna lie, <laughs> yeah, very capitalistic. Um, 
Didn't yeah. he go to jail? He, yeah. No, he didn't go to jail. Uh, one of my other clients went to jail, and he made me lots of money too. Damn it! But listen, here's the point. <laughs> the point is this. I was gonna say, I think jail would change him. Yes. Yes. So we've got. <laughs> they call him Shamwell. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Inappropriate. We've yeah. got this white white activist in L.A. who still makes videos every day that go viral, and he's still being followed by Obama. He's still being followed by Rihanna and every celebrity and all this shit. But here's where my heart's broken. My wife and I had to go to therapy over it because she was worried about my life. And I had to stop being the guy who screamed at police and just filmed them quietly from afar. That's who I am now. She doesn't. That's all she cared about was like, don't get in their face. Don't make them want to murder you anymore. Mm -hmm. If you ever film them, just shoot it from afar and get the fuck out. So that is me. But here's what I think is bothering me is let's go back to where are black leaders and why are people always trying to tear down black leaders? Even black people are always, you know, well, they're, uh, fuck him and fuck him. No, we need whoever's going to lead somebody because I guess what I'm saying is as a white activist who's still screaming BLM, I'm the last one, at least in LA. I'm the last one in LA screaming it every day, still wearing BLM masks, still wearing the, the shirts every day. I'm the last one. And it's like, I don't even see black people doing it. And I'm still doing it every day. And it's like, it's frustrating, man, when no one else, it's like everyone was like, well, that was a fun summer, wasn't it? We marched and we got to hang out even though it's COVID. No, God damn it. It's still going on. Nothing changed. Why did, where did everybody else go? I'm still showing you videos. I'm still showing you proof every day. Stop it. letting it happen. It's the people who are still letting that happen. It's just like how I said in the South, they fuck themselves. It's true. You want the cops to stop doing things. You can't just march for a half a summer. You can't let your black celebrities not fucking speak up. And you're right. I, white people had to speak up too. Lunell said, this is the first time I've ever seen white people at a march. She goes, that's the reason we're not being murdered because you guys are here. They're afraid to kill white people. And she was right. And I'm sorry for interrupting you, Sierra. Sorry. Well, I think it's kind of, it's kind of weird to like be specifically calling out like black celebrities because like you said if you feel like you're the only one like where are the, where are the rest of the where are the rest of the white celebrities where i agree with you Asian but celebrities, white celebrities don't celebrities. need to it doesn't they affect do. them oh, yeah, they but do. they doesn't desperately them. desperately oh, yeah, they do. desperately do oh, yes yeah. they should no they there's desperately do they should if there's and one they, thing they there's one thing if there's one thing that i learned out of 2020 is well there's two things i learned out of 2020 is that Y'all can't nobody be trusted. All y'all are nasty. And two is that, you know, this is becoming, this is evolving. It has evolved completely from a racial issue where it's like, I mean, it, it, in in some ways it kind of feel when, when we put the onus on like one community, it feels like we're kind of essentially telling people, telling like a whole group of people to like pull themselves up by their bootstraps. No, because, all I mean by you know, this is you. Well, well, well I just, I want to finish. I'm not, I'm not I'm trying sorry, to like, insult your view or anything, but. Because, you know, we're saying, we're asking, you know, where is this? Where is that? Where are these people? Where are those people? Well, the same things that we're describing, you know, about the way that, you know, different people are profiled or targeted, punished differently, that all affects, that all affects people. The same way we watch different celebrities, like even Ellen, like getting, uh, you know, canceled or blackballed, essentially, once they established that they were gay, that same kind of backlash exists for people that you know, are famous and do have money and have all this potential and promise. And, you know, once they do decide to speak out against the wrong thing, you know, it's over. They're doing that right. It happened to Colin Kaepernick. We see it happen to Colin Kaepernick mm -hmm. every day that he don't play football. It, it's happening right. I'll let me tell you right now. It's happening right now to um that representative, uh, Madison Cawthorn. I don't know why they don't like that man, but they don't like that man at all. And every day it seems like they're leaking some weird... um picture or video I or think quote they're... about that man i don't know what it is but you know your privilege your 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 not privilege but your your status can go like that if you say something that somebody doesn't like yeah, correct and, but and i'm and, doing uh, it is and so that's the difference i am not saying to someone else hey you guys i i'm not going to do it but the black community should do it i'm saying as someone who has lost millions of dollars yeah half of my family and friends and i'm saying if i can do it where is everyone else? Yeah, I'm they white all celebrities should. too. But what I meant by that, and right. I didn't mean to just say black, but why I say black is it is a Black Lives Matter issue. And when I said, oh, if this was Jewish people being killed and there was not one Jewish celebrity ever at an event or a rally, I would have said Jewish people. Why aren't Jewish people 
Jewish celebrities showing up. Where's Adam Sandler? Where is, you know, this guy or that guy? That's all I meant. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I see is okay. And I am doing it. So that's why I feel like I can tell any right. other celebrity, I did it. You better do it. No, no, no. did it. He lost money, but we're all coming back from it and we're going to be better for it. I mean, you, you do have a right to say that. You have a right to say whatever. Um, but yeah, there's two things. One, one at first I was going to say the reason why, just speaking as a black person that, but I'm not famous or rich, <laughs> but the reason why I'm not out there um, protesting every day is because I got bills, my friend. Um, not that you matter, but this is where it goes back to rich people. And this is why, again, I agree with Sierra even more, like actually really hard. So I am very, I very too. adamant. Yeah, I'm point. very adamant about, I shouldn't have to tell the people that oppress me about my oppression. I'm, I'm too busy being oppressed right now. Um, you, if you really cared and you really it. had like, uh, uh, if you really cared, then you would go look up yourself, how you have me fucked up. You know, like if that was something that mattered, because for the last, I don't know, since I got here, since, since we got here on America, we've been probably protesting a little bit about how we don't like how we're being treated to a certain extent. It only, it seems to only make a big difference when it is from these, the, the people that have justice and rights to actually say something. So... I would put it more on it's everybody. If you if you got if you if you're profiting off of this system that is um, profiting off of uh, systematic racism, then there I and that's including me. That's working a job. I'm I'm not like out here on the street struggling all the way, but we have a little bit of responsibility to, in my opinion, to say something. Um, uh, and I, I think uh, yeah, I feel you. I feel you that I think every every especially celebrities should be out here saying stuff, but. Honestly, I guess what if, if if black celebrities did come out as a as a force, you don't get rid of all of them. And then every white celebrity would have followed because they were just as afraid, but have everything to lose and nothing to gain, if that makes sense. And I know you say they do have everything to gain, but I'm talking about white people don't care. That's the people I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. You know, those people, the ones we don't care about anyway, <laughs> you know, the ones I hope change or yeah. something good happens. I mean, there's every generation. I'm, I'm much older than you guys, but I feel like when I grew up, I thought, man, someday all those dumb old people <laughs> in the 60s will be dead. The ones who hated black people and stuff and we'll just move on. And where what happened? I guess they told their kids. She no, it's just, and those kids told their kids. Is, no, this, they're still working. They is, won't quit. They won't retire. <laughs> no, they won't no, die. No, I, I think it's beyond. I think it's beyond that. Sierra and Dante, like I'm telling you, it's that systematic. Like even the people that, even me, this person is preaching all this yada yada. Let me get a nice amount of money in my hand, a nice amount of clout, and we'll see how silent I get when I have some comfortable life for me and mine. Um, it takes a lot of confidence, which I'm, I'm under confidence, a lot of bravery to step out of that. Again, a systematic capitalistic, it makes us really into, it makes us really individ individualistic to a point where once you make it past that cross, cross the threshold, it's not your problem anymore. You know, um, I even had that thing with even the way I speak sometimes is like, since I sound white or the good one that I now I have to, even check, I have to, have to check myself to be like, am I still here to represent everybody, even though I've passed this threshold that I'm a white person is able to listen to me talk or yeah. whatever, I still have to be like, if I had a more slang or if I use anything different, I, I you know, there's this, you know, you still have to be ever present of that, it, I think sometimes, but it's easy just to be very um, sympathetic to my black celebrities out there. It is easy to fall, it's a slippery slope and money will change your mind quick. <laughs> I you understand. know, um, but how about someone who's as rich as Oprah that could never have her money taken yeah. away? She could have been out there every day and she would have had every celebrity right behind her. And, mm -hmm. you know, I did it. <laughs> Oprah, I gave up millions for this. And mm -hmm. uh, why can't you? Why can't you? Why don't you why don't you give a billion dollars to some organization that'll do it for you then, or something? You know what I mean? Let's use the money. Celebrities, if you don't want to show up, let's let the money show up. Give them the money. Ooh, yeah, give have y'all seen? Have y'all all seen? Um, don't look up. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. I, I saw like no, I haven't. Oh, I did see it, but I was too high to remember it. <laughs> okay, so so the the premise of it, everybody listening, the premise of it is essentially, you know, they Leonardo DiCaprio looks up at the sky and he sees that there's a meteor hurtling towards oh, yes. Earth. Yeah. And, he and Jennifer Lawrence are like, oh shit, you know, we gotta tell somebody. So they go and tell the government. The government's like, oh shit, this sounds important, bro. And they finally get up to the president, who is Meryl Streep, who's basically playing Trump. And 
she's like, I hear you, but I have midterms and like, <laughs> so, and so, so literally like, and it's like a DEF CON like 11 situation. Like it's going like once if the, if the, if the meteor makes contact, it's going right. to destroy the planet. Like it's, there's, there's no, there's no chance. There's no chance of anything positive happening. It's not going to miss. It's not going to, there will know, be no midterms, be, you know, whittle down. No midterms, <laughs> babes. Mm -hmm. And so you get through, you keep watching the movie and the movie is basically about people like, it's basically about misinformation and like basically like the way that we live now. So that it was like soup. I thought it was maybe going to be like interesting and fun, but it was mostly just incredibly depressing. Yes, of, like, bitch, I lived all, I literally lived all that. Like it just happened like 18 months ago. And so like the further you get, like the, it finally gets out to like the, the public that there is a giant meteor hurtling towards the earth. And so everybody starts freaking out. Meryl Streep is like, oh my God, fine, I'll do something. And so like they craft some kind of plan to like shoot down the meteor and they have it marked on the calendar. <laughs> they have like X's crossing <laughs> off. They're checking off the boxes until the day they're gonna shoot the meteor. And then, you know, it counts down and it doesn't happen. And they're like, girl, what happened? And so then they go back to Meryl Streep and Meryl's like, okay, so I heard what you were saying about like this whole <laughs> year and like imminent demise and complete extinction. Okay, but what if we let it keep going? Mm. And so when faced with like the imminent, literal, complete, undeniable like destruction of all humanity, all business, all life, all funds, all that, some dummy had the great idea. It's kind of a spoiler, but you'll be fine. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Some dummy had the great idea spoiler to try alert. to see... Um, what if we could what if we could make some money off of this ah. like what if we could make what if i told you there was a way to profit off of the meteor so they just let it keep hurtling towards the earth and like the the window to to interfere with its impact is closing like by the hour and they're like ah but 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 i'm telling you bro if we could get this to work like you have you ever seen a kajillion dollars even on a screen like it's it's crazy. So I say that just to say that like you know, capitalism. It 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 definitely. It's we've definitely morphed from a more racial, from a more strictly racial point of uh, contention in the country to to a classist one, for sure. Because like that's, I mean that basically happened. That basically happened between um, all of these like crazy crackhead Congress people. You know. Buying stock in vac in Pfizer and Moderna right. and the people who right. make masks when they knew before anyone else knew, you know, all that kind of all that crazy shit. It happens every it happens every day, and that's what's happening with all this abortion stuff, all the abortion stuff, the CRT stuff. They're finding of ways course. to profit off of you being vulnerable and dumb and just at risk or just dying. I, I'm pretty sure they found a way to profit off of you just plain dying. No one will be hurt more by this than women of color. Mm -hmm. No one. No one will be hurt more. No one. White women will not be hurt even close to as much as women of color or the or or color communities because people are taking on an extra baby that they couldn't afford and they're being forced to by the law. Do you know in Tennessee right now, do you guys read that if you even have plan B on you, you get a fine of $50,000. I saw oh they're God. trying to do that. They're tr and what, was it, is it Tennessee or someone else is trying to also outlaw condoms? Like, Yeah, they want to stop the Maybe prevention. Florida. Just brain dead, just brain pregnancy. dead. Yeah. Right, Florida, if it were a person, it would wear children's teeth around it. <laughs> like, that's a weird place. <laughs> I don't disagree with that. that. Florida would not be allowed to live near a school if it were a person. <laughs> no. You know you can't go no. over there, Florida. The kids yeah, Florida is bad. <laughs> I have kids in me. It would be on the no. It would be. The it no would fly be the fly. List. It would be the paper. Right. Yeah. Florida's crazy. Golly. I don't know what's wrong with that whole state. But yeah, I agree with everything you said. You guys are so smart. You got it going on. You know what you guys are talking about. Yeah. Everything is. You're you're, you're right about everything. You know. And with this, you know, you mentioned all these crazies in, in Congress. The one thing I could say that I do know about Caulfield is I think the reason people were trying to make fun of him is he's one of those guys who is always going after the LGBT community. And then so they leaked a picture of him having sex with a man so that he could stop pretending he's not gay anymore and leave the LGBTQ community alone. 
So that's why they were messing with him, I, I think. I hate Republicans, um, but even that was so funny because he was just like, bitch, I don't care. Yeah, it's me. I don't care. I'm a prankster. That was a prank, dummy. A prank. <laughs> yeah, right. A prank. <laughs> Well, he did say the other one was a prank where he was wearing like women's clothes. He said they're like, all pranks. Funny. That's okay. He said Who they're cares? all pranks. He said, I just lovingly, as a jokingly jokey person, I just casually, you know, thrusted my naked crotch into my cousin's face over and over. It's fine. We're friends and we're bros. That's what bros do. Do you wow. not have bros? <laughs> That's what we do. Everyone knows yeah. that. Sound like, it sounds like football to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy wow. guys and you know the, the really crazy people like the marjorie taylor greens who we saw a video of her you know saying we are all going to be here tomorrow when they try to steal the election and blah 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 she started an insurrection with trump if anyone <laughs> is a lawyer out there who's listening in washington dc i want you to go read the constitution the 14th amendment section 3 it basically says if you ever are a part of an insurrection against the United States of America, you can no longer be allowed to run for public office. Mm. So Trump and her should never be allowed to again, because that was an insurrection. People did break into our capital and tried to kill our vice president. And anyone who says it wasn't is a liar. And anyone who tried to start it should never be allowed in politics. But what if you're just really passionate about tourism? <laughs> 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 very passionate what if you're just really passionate about rubbing your own feces onto government right property? on podiums and all sorts of stuff i don't I think it counts then that's like double jeopardy or something gotta be you guys i have to find vaseline or something in my house at some point for my stupid lips i am dying yeah i don't yeah. know what it is we're getting weird weather right now i think we have a lot of wind lately and it's just killing oh, yeah. you got some dry air gotta get a humidifier we have one in the house, but outside, it's like I have a convertible. I'm like, <sighs> oh, that'll, oh, for sure. Yeah, it's getting me. Mm -hmm. I know, me too. I could be, on, I could talk about this all day. Yeah. Oh, it's so upsetting, isn't it? So embarrassing. I don't know if you did. It really is. Can I say one thing about that? Did you see Handmaid's Tale? Did you ever watch that? No, not yet. I know the premise. I, I hope you watch it. Please watch it. I beg you to watch it. And here's why. It came out during Obama when everyone was holding hands and butterflies were flying and you remember, and little birds would come up to you and sing in your ear little Disney songs <laughs> as we'd walk around. I remember those days, it was wonderful. And then Trump came along and what we are seeing now is the beginning of The Handmaid's Tale. So basically the premise, I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but the premise is yeah. this, America is America and we get someone like Trump who basically turns half of the country, the middle part, New York and California are free and so is Canada, obviously, but he takes the middle of the country and it becomes its own country. Mm. That country is basically us when we started. Pilgrims, like, you know, women have zero rights. They have to cover oh, up. No. They, uh, the worst part though is any women that weren't part of this, that were just regular women like yourself, like let's say you couldn't get out of uh, your home in time because everyone else is running and you're like, you're nuts. And this isn't gonna happen. Everyone else leaves. So anyone like you that isn't part of their religion is used as a baby maker. So you are oh, sent okay. to a house and you are their slave in the house and then you are expected to carry the baby for the women because no one can have babies in, the, in this time period. And so just the slave women do it and that's basically it. And you became a slave because you lived in America and didn't get out quick enough. That's White, black, Hispanic, what I, it doesn't matter. Just every, I, all women are slaves. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think the author said that she intentionally wrote only things that actually happen so that people can be like your imagination so fucked up so i think every every aspect of the story was true at some point historically somewhere you know oh, right yeah Which is just I more, mean, so know. much of it when you when you watch it you go my god they're doing that still in other countries or we're back yeah. to doing it now or we us are. yeah that yeah. happened in north carolina last week. right <laughs> Yeah, or I just hate how people, we, when we talked earlier, you guys, about how people pick and choose with the Bible. They've always done that, and especially racists. That's their go-to thing. You know what I mean? It's the one that they help change the world. Oh, we're going to make everyone a Christian, so they listen to us and, you know, obey us. And, and I hate to say that because I was born a Christian and all of this stuff, but it's about control. Religion is man-made, and when, when we finally get rid of that someday and just love God or know God or whatever the fuck happens, we're gonna be in a better spot because people can no longer use it to enslave others. It was the well, it's biggest like, enslavement. Uh, 
a, of anybody. A excuse or a vehicle for people to do what they want to do or would have done anyway, you know? And why do we think that that's the one religion? There have been religions since the beginning of time. The Greeks had a billion religions. There's a million religions. And then if you watch Religious, he even shows you that basically the story of Jesus and the mom and the birth and the, uh, the December 31st happened with like Ganesh or someone in the Indian religion. It's identical. And he was a thousand years before, uh, you know, born of a virgin mother. His name was like whatever. And he was born December 30, uh, 20, whatever the birthday is. When is Christmas? 25th. 25th. Same, same one. You know, it was, it's identical. Look it up. But it's in religious, religious, religious. Religious. The Bill Maher movie documentary. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one really changes your mind about things because he just shows you in each book what it actually says. You don't have to question it. You don't have to, you know. There's a great, great, great movie. I highly recommend it. I also recommend you guys go watch Bro What Happened sometime. It's fun. Yeah. I play a crazy drug dealer, um, and my wife plays my wife in the movie. She plays uh, an even crazier drug dealer and has to go to the party with these kids because they are taking some of our drugs, and she needs to watch them. It's a funny movie. All right. I'm here for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if people want to follow my activism, I'm Dante the comic on all social media. I, I, uh, most of my videos are probably best seen at TikTok, where I'm just Dante the comic two because they took down one uh -huh. because China is a police state and they don't like questioning authority and the fact that all my videos were about questioning the police they kept taking them down and finally they took i had millions of followers bye bye they even owed me tons of money when they got rid of me like they owed me money because my videos pulled in money <sighs> damn damn that's wow. the worst hate to see it oh well i don't care who cares i just want what's right i don't need the fame i don't you guys don't have to follow me follow the stories you know what i mean follow the money like yeah. finest says things will be right just follow your politics that's the problem not enough people are you just watch five things a week that have to do with the news and try to get it from somewhere outside of the u.s doesn't mean that we're it's just too many companies are owned by republicans and democrats watch the bbc watch al jazeera you know watch mm -hmm. i don't know shit just check twitter sometimes we'll tell you what's happening mm -hmm. It's not uh, how we don't have like a news source anymore. Everyone, you know, this fake news got us all from watching news. Doesn't mean it's not true. I mean, we all know that there are always biased stories, but news is news. You know what I mean? And people didn't like climate change is not up for. That's not up for just, you know, you can't you can't say like, oh, you know, um, they the scientists say a woman, uh, a baby starts at conception. Oh, but we don't believe in science when it comes to climate. Shut up. You can't pick and choose. Yeah, a lot of higher up politicians still do. Do you know that so many, like I watched a, a, another documentary called Get Me Roger Stone. Roger Stone was that white haired, skinny, crazy dude. <laughs> oh, no, no. Wait, Where's is this the one you're talking about, Sierra? <laughs> no, he's another idiot. He's, he's a big he's idiot. <laughs> but the uh, thing about this guy, if you watch his video, you think that Trump and all of his people are just pure evil, right? Or stupid, right? But then I watched this video and this guy has been working ever since Nixon. And he's proud of what yes. he does. He said in this video, he goes, look, Republicans hire me to make up bullshit to help them win. And they do. He goes, one day I was sitting around with Trump and I thought, wouldn't it be funny if we made up a story that Obama is from Kenya and we start spreading it? And he says this in the video. He goes, I started that. Trump thought it was hilarious and we spread it. And he goes, it spread like wildfire. Roger Stone is a demon. Right. But I loved how he was so honest. I went, look, it's, I'm being paid to do it. So I get, I get, I don't like him. What he does is evil. It's hurt the world. But he is doing what he's paid for. That is what he's paid for. If these guys want a cheater, they chose a cheater. I mean, he worked for Nixon. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah. Get me Roger Stone. It's a great documentary. Great, great, great. You gotta see it. You gotta see it. Just a demon of a person. Yeah. Brandon, do you have last thoughts before we go? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, we always do last thoughts on the show, Dante. Um, we just go around and uh, say sort of whatever is on our mind, and then wrap up. Um, finest. 
Nah, nigga, you go first. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I think that um, it it's been really amazing and uh, like enlightening having you on, Dante. Um, I think that you're someone who uh, like is not afraid or very brave in speaking your mind and speaking to a lot of these injustices. And um, uh, I think uh, me included, like a, a lot of um, people could really uh, use that and learn from that. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you being on. Thank you. Yes. I yeah, thank you. Also, I appreciate hearing from all, just all of the things that are going on with you and and I um that was really insightful and good to hear from Have I talked to a white person a civil rights activist? That's pretty strong. We just talked to Jean a couple weeks ago. Who? Jean Peelin, the writer. Oh yes, yeah. I talk to a black white activists all the time. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um I didn't forget you, Gina. Uh, yeah, so I remember. I remember you. Um, I'm, I'm just thank you for thank you for coming on. It's, it's always awesome to have anybody talking on here. Let me see something really seriously from the heart, not just some cheesy stuff. Um, no, I truly find it. Your perspective, I, I think, is my my favorite takeaway here. I I, I do think that it's uh I I'm in my notes is this comedians. Just being also, they just have lived a lot of times they're going through like a, quite a bit, but they just are so good at turning a spin on it or taking taking all this stuff that's going on in life and, and, like and I killed my mom. making it. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. My mom would think it's the funniest thing ever. I promise she would tell the story yeah. every day if she could. Look, look, sometimes I, as someone that likes to be art and gets attention, like I want mom to hold her breath too when I'm talking, okay? <laughs> so I don't, it doesn't oh matter what gosh. situation she's in, she better just be waiting for her son to say what she needs to hear about my day. Um, so yeah, but, and a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Same. So I wanted to uh, say, Sierra? if I can, to you guys, oh, yeah. that okay. next time, if you have me on, I'd love to interview you guys because I felt a little left out in the way that I was being interviewed. And when you guys would talk, I was like, oh, I want to hear more. And then I was like, shit, I'm yeah. the interviewee. God darn it. So next time, really, I want to ask you guys yeah. some questions and get to know more of what you guys want and want from not just me, but what some ideas are for your community yeah. and the policing throughout the whole nation and the world and all those things. And I hope people respond uh, in the comments about that too. And next time, yeah, maybe we can have a, a round table instead of interviewing me. Let's have a conversation next time. Okay. Yeah, I would love it, you guys. Because really, you guys are so smart yeah. and what a good group. And I want to hear more from Grandpa too. Because he's got a perspective none of us are going to have. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure, you guys. And thank you so much for having me on. I'm going to go let my wife know where I am. I never even told her I was in the. <laughs> so, did you have any last words before yes, you have yeah. Um, I want to say thank you so much for coming. I would definitely love to do that. Um, I would definitely love to do that later this year and have like a have a reverse interview. And um, I do want to say before we go, um, I want to say fuck. Um, <laughs> what is your name? What is your name? I don't even know what your stupid name is. Thank Joe Manchin. Fuck Joe yep. Manchin. Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> absolutely worthless. Um, the day that we were recording this, all the beloveds, queridos, um, the day we we're recording this, um, this thumb of a person has decided to be the only fucking Democrat in quotes that voted against the abortion yeah. bill that was mm -hmm. admittedly about. 49 years too late um but uh already didn't have enough votes to pass on its own but joey just had to stand out and be uh, a little pick me boy so he decided to vote no he's absolutely worthless um i'll be tweeting that daily if you want to follow me on twitter i'm um, not gonna post not gonna give you the handle you gotta look for that bitch um, <laughs> gonna be tweeting daily about how worthless joe mansion is until he's uh voted out or you know indicted whatever i don't know what he does with his time um yeah 
But thank you so much for coming, Dante. Cannot wait to have you back. Same. I've Same, you guys. It. I'll come on anytime. I want to do one more thank you to Austin, my assistant, who I think is Austin. great. And he got thank me on the show with you guys. And I just want to thank him because I'm so glad he did. And it worked out because I wasn't near my computer and I was able to use my phone. I mm -hmm. apologize for any confusion it's, it had with you guys. No, it's perfect. All mm -hmm. right. It's still daylight it here pleasure. in Hollywood. So I'm putting my glasses on before I go back outside. <laughs> Bye, you guys. All right. Okay, have a good day. Podcasting night. with Grandpa and Rosie. Always on his shoulder. This is. Grandpa and Chill. Grandpa and Chill is brought to you by your hosts, Brandon Fox, Bart Frank, and Finus Jackson. Our producer is Sierra Doss. To watch and listen to full episodes of the show and follow us on social media, visit grandpaandchill.com. That's grandpaandchill.com.